Hi, my name is Jeannie Lee, and I'll be uh, introducing Alana Fruoff. Alana Fruoff is a pre-medical student in the class of 2014. She has pursued an interest in healthcare policies in both the United States and foreign countries. She has worked in several healthcare settings in the U.S., ranging from working as an EMT, volunteering in a nursing home, and working in various hospitals. During the spring of her sophomore year, she received an advanced study grant to facilitate research on the developing healthcare system in Nepal. She spent the summer of 2012 working in various healthcare institutions in Nepal, interviewing numerous healthcare personnel and immersing in the Nepalese culture in order to fully understand the status of healthcare in the country. Her talk tonight is A Healthcare Crisis, My Experience in Nepal. Please join me in welcoming Alana Fruoff. Hello everyone, my name is Alana Fruoff and tonight I'll be talking about my experience in Nepal. In particular, I'll be discussing the development of modern medical facilities alongside the deep-rooted traditional medical practices in the country. And my knowledge of this topic stems from a research project that I designed and conducted this summer after receiving an advanced study grant. And this advanced study grant enabled me to live in Nepal for two months, working in various healthcare environments and immersing in the culture. And this enabled me to better understand the nation, its people, and its healthcare conditions. My interest in this topic stems from my, my passion for medicine and my desire to understand the influence of modernization and culture on healthcare in developing countries. And for those of you not familiar with Nepal, it's a developing country in South Asia, landlocked between India and China, as seen here. And so Nepal has a very rich cultural history, and the country is 80% Hindu and 11% Buddhist. As you can see here, there are several landmarks and shrines devoted to the Hindu gods and the Buddhist values. And this speaks to the cultural importance of religion to the Nepali people. In particular, the cultural values of Nepal have transcended into the traditional medical practices of the nation. Here you can see a religious figure performing rites to a group of people. And because Nepal has a long history of inadequate modern medical facilities, traditional medical practices have always been a major form of release for the Nepali people. Despite the advancement of modern medicine in the country, m traditional medical practices are ubiquitous throughout society. And this speaks to the spiritual and cultural importance of traditional medical systems to the Nepali people. In particular, traditional medical practices are most pronounced in rural areas, and that's because in rural areas, modern medicine isn't as common, and so traditional medical facilities are some of the only forms of medicine available to the people. Um, traditional medical systems are very convenient for rural areas because they rely on natural resources. Ayurveda is one of the most common forms of traditional medicine in Nepal, and this this is a system based on herbal remedies that originated in India. And as you can see here, this is an image of an Ayurvedic medical plant growing at a local temple. And this illustrates how easy it is to grow these medical remedies. In addition to rural areas, urban areas also have widespread access to traditional medical facilities. Although traditional medicine in the city tends to be more modernized. People in the city use traditional medicine as an alternative. In particular, people experiencing chronic diseases such as arthritis, jaundice, and mental illnesses use traditional medicine. Whether traditional medicine as used, is used as an alternative or as a primary care option, you can see how important traditional medicine is to the country. And this can be seen by the fact that all people in Nepal believe in the success of traditional medicine, and a significant portion of Nepali people even prefer traditional medicine to modern medicine because they are skeptical of modern medicine. And here are some images of, so of some personal experiences that I had with traditional medicine. On the left is an image of a wooden pillar in a temple in the capital Kathmandu. And this is used to alleviate back pain after the person rubs their back on the pillar. In the center is an image of a man using Tibetan singing bowls on my father. 
And so these bowls are placed on the area of the body that is hurting, and then it is struck with a wooden rod, and the vibrations are believed to alleviate the pain. And then on the right is a fertility shrine in a temple, and these are seen throughout the country. And because there are very few fertility clinics, women go to these shrines and worship them in hopes of increased fertility. And although traditional medical facilities are common throughout Nepal, the recent development of allopathic facilities has allowed increased emphasis on allopathic medicine. And just to note, I'll be using allopathic medicine and modern medicine interchangeably, and that's because allopathic medicine simply refers to modern or Western medicine. And so this is an image of the staff that I worked with at Parapakar Maternity Hospital in the capital Kathmandu of Nepal. And so the healthcare sector of Nepal is divided primarily between the private and public sector. And the public sector is run by the government and is generally much more affordable. And so a majority of the patients come from the lower and lower middle income classes. These facilities are um, inferior in infrastructure and they tend to be very overcrowded. Additionally, they lack um, a great amount of faculty, which results in a high patient to faculty ratio. In particular, nurses and physicians are lacking. In 2004, the World Health Organization recorded that there are only two professional doctors and two professional nurses for every 10,000 Nepali people. And so this results in physicians having to be very efficient and can only spend a certain amount of time on each patient in order to tend to all of the patients. And often this compromises care because the physicians cannot be as thorough and attentive. And here are some images of the private institutions in Nepal. And as you can see, they are of much better condition than the public hospitals. Although these hospitals are not very realistic for majority of the Nepali population because they are very expensive. And so the hospitals in Nepal suffer from inferior facilities. Technology is generally 15 to 20 years behind, and the technology that does exist is immensely inadequate. For example, in the maternity hospital I worked in, there, were on, there was only one ventilator in the hospital, and at one point, two newborns needed the ventilator. So this resulted in one infant dying. And this is the sad reality of healthcare in Nepal. Additionally, the whole country only has three MRI machines, and this is not nearly enough to serve the whole country. Additionally, the country lacks a lot of technologists, and so there are no people to operate or repair many of the machines. Uh, for example, in Parapakar Hospital, there was a mammography machine that had no one to work it, and so it was simply collecting dust for months. Here are some other images of the inferior facilities in Nepal. And in addition to this, basic accommodations are deficient and sanitation efforts are dismal. Um, most beds don't have any sheets, gloves are reused, um, trash isn't properly disposed, blood isn't really cleaned up, things like that. And so although healthcare in the city is inadequate in many ways, at least people have access to healthcare facilities. Um, that's not true for a, a large portion of Nepal. Because Nepal has a very hilly, hilly and mountainous terrain, um, it's very hard to provide access to a lot of these regions, and so people are without access to healthcare facilities. Additionally, it's very hard to staff these facilities because nurses and physicians don't want to work in rural Nepal. And so the structure of the healthcare sector itself um, um, illustrates this. As you can see here at the top, we have the central hospitals, which are concentrated in the capital. And these are the best equipped and best staffed. And then below this, you have zonal and regional hospitals. And then you have district hospitals. There are 76 districts in Nepal, and each district only has one district hospital. And these only have general physicians, and so they can only provide general care to their patients. And then below this, you have primary health care centers, which only have one general physician, and then health posts, which only have paramedics and nurses. And so as you can see, as you go down the, the list, you have facilities that are more widespread and more abundant. However, they're not as well staffed and equipped. And so often patients are referred to the central and zonal hospitals. However, many patients can't make this trip because it's too expensive. 
And so here you see a picture of a family carrying their sick relative miles to reach a hospital. And this is the sad reality of healthcare in Nepal. People often carry their sick relatives on their back for days or weeks to reach healthcare facilities. In addition to being inadequate, the healthcare is not, um, it's not accessible to all of the masses because Nepal is such a poor country. And you have 30% of the people in Nepal living below the poverty line. And this poverty line is set very low, so even people above the poverty line still can't afford health care. And although government hospitals are very discounted and there are programs to aid patients, these measures are not enough. And primary health care is somewhat accessible to most people. However, higher care, such as surgeries, is impossible for people to attain because even after receiving aid, they cannot um, afford this. And another problem is that a large portion of the population doesn't understand the importance of looking after their health. And many patients come in very late stages of their illness, and this prevents doctors from being able to effectively treat them. And so a lot of the problems that I saw in Nepal stem from poor administration. The government has been severely lacking in the last few years. Um, over the last 10 years, Nepal has been trying to install a democracy. However, their efforts have been largely unsuccessful. And as a result of the political instability, productive administration hasn't been able to occur and no policies are being made. And so in order for healthcare reform to take place, there is a large need for government reform. And so moving forward, what can we do to help the healthcare in Nepal? Well, first, financial aid will have to increase drastically because without any money, the country cannot fix any of its problems. And so this means foreign nations and organizations donating money. Additionally, equipment donations are needed. So this means that hospitals and international organizations can donate old equipment to the country so that they have ample resources. And then um, donating supplies and money, however, won't be enough because the same problems will persist. And so international intervention needs to increase. International aid could do several things. They can train technicians so that there are people to work the machines that they do have, and they could set up programs to continue to train these technicians. The international aid can also build new facilities so that they aren't as sparse, and the ones that do exist aren't so overcrowded. And that international intervention can also promote healthcare careers so that nurses and doctors aren't so scarce. And lastly, the international aid can promote health education of the masses of Nepal so that people are aware of the importance of looking after their own health. And so what does this mean? Well, the dire situation of Nepali healthcare means that people must take action in order to preserve the nation and its people. And this action can take place on an individual, organizational, and national level. And this situation does not only apply to Nepal, but to all developing countries. And so people need to be aware of this. And what can you do to help? There are several things that everyone can do. Um, donations are greatly appreciated to all the organizations that serve these developing countries. Also, simply starting conversations about developing countries and informing people about this problem. And lastly, there are several organizations that organize service trips to developing countries and provide relief to them. And I strongly suggest this because it's a great opportunity not only to travel but to help the people of a um, country that is lacking. And so that's it. Thank you very much for listening.